Welcome to footballgameplan.com where football makes sense. I'm Emory Hunt, the czar of the playbook. Bring you our 2013 NFL team preview. We're taking a look at the New York Jets. We're gonna break down their offense, their defense, as well as their special teams to see what we can expect from the Jets this upcoming season. When you look at the Jets quarterback situation for 2013, it's essentially a two-man race between Mark Sanchez and second round pick Geno Smith. Now, you can go back to Sanchez's rookie year and second year in the league when he led the Jets to the AFC Championship game, but he has regressed each and every year. The one constant with Sanchez has been the turnovers. He throws way too many interceptions. He struggles in certain situations. That right there will not win you a lot of football games. That's why I think it's important for the Jets to start Geno Smith. Sanchez has positioned himself to be a very good backup that can come in and start a game or two if need be, but Geno Smith is a guy you drafted. He's the better quarterback, and he can help you win football games. He's a smart, cerebral player that can spread the football around to many targets. And if you're a coach, you can trust Geno Smith. You can trust that he can make the right decision with the football. You can't say that about Sanchez. And if my job is on the line like Rex Ryan's job may be on the line this season, he needs a quarterback that he can trust. Here's a guy that never threw over seven interceptions in his career at West Virginia, and he played in two separate offenses. So I think the Jets can do the right thing by starting Geno Smith, starting fresh, having a very solid and capable backup in Mark Sanchez, and that's the only way to rectify this quarterback position. In the backfield, the Jets wanted to get back to the ground and pound game that led them to an AFC Championship game in back-to-back -back years. They traded for Chris Ivory of the New Orleans Saints. I like this move on this front. This is a guy that does have the burst, does have some acceleration. His only knock is that he hasn't played a full season in his three-year NFL career. 12 games as a rookie, six games each of the years afterwards. If he can stay healthy, they have exactly what they need in the backfield, but that's a big if because of his running style. He's going to have to learn to make people miss and not to take on head-on collisions each and every down. They also signed Mike Goodson from the Oakland Raiders. Here's a guy that has talent, but he has the fumbleitis issues and now has the off-the-field issues that you don't want to deal with if you're this football team. So the Jets will still have to count on guys like Joe McKnight or Bilal Power, who's still on the roster, although I think McKnight has a better shot because of his ability to make plays as a returner. They also drafted Tommy Bohannon, the fullback out of Wake Forest, to help bolster the running game as well. They didn't draft a running back, which was confusing to me. I still view this as a thin position for the Jets' offense. biggest question mark on the Jets offense is not the quarterback position it's the receiving core when you look at this group of guys you don't see a clear number one threat and if you don't have threat you need someone that's consistent I know to get Santonio Holmes back from injury but we don't know when he will return from injury when he's out there healthy 100% and motivated yes he's a very good player they also bring back Clyde Gates who has some deep speed as well as Jeremy Curley who does a great job in the slot he's a keeper in my opinion but they really need Stephen Hill to step up and be the guy they thought they drafted in the second round he's a body catcher in my opinion I don't think he's going to be anything more than a third or fourth wide receiver but they need him to be consistent week in week out he has to get better this year in order for the Jets offense to take off but all is not bleak in the receiving core in my opinion when you look at some of the guys they have on the roster Jordan White I of Western Michigan was a very good college player. I think he deserves more of an opportunity this year, as well as undrafted free agent Ryan Spadola and Zach Rogers. Both of those guys were highly productive at the collegiate level. You just want guys out there that's consistent and that can catch the football with their hands. The tight end position looks a lot better in my opinion with the newly signed Kellen Winslow, who is a free agent. Two things you know already about Winslow. One, he can get open, and two, he can catch the football. They're teaming him up with Jeff Cumberland, who had a solid year last year. They bring him back on a one-year tender. This makes a formidable one-two punch for the tight end position and helping that quarterback out. Also, keep an eye on undrafted rookie free agent Mike Shanahan from Pitt, who was a receiver in college. They're moving him to tight end. He has very good hands, and I think he also gives you that flexibility of being able to flex him out as a receiver and hoping to get that matchup versus a linebacker or a safety. Jets offensive line looks a lot better now than it did in the middle part of last season. They got better as the year progressed. You have to like the pieces they've added to that puzzle 
this offseason. You look at Nick Mango, this is a guy that's one of the best centers in the game, and you have to like what he brings to the table from a leadership perspective. Now, at the left tackle position, you look at another guy that's a very good player, one of the best in the league in DeBrick Shaw Ferguson, doing a great job protecting the blind side of Mark Sanchez last year. Now, what I liked most was how Austin Howard stepped in last year in a hostile situation and did a great job along the right side of the offensive line. So you have to give him credit for doing that and did a great job of it. Now, in the offseason, they bring in Willie Colon from the Pittsburgh Steelers. Hopefully, he can stay healthy because if he can, the Jets got themselves a steal with a guy that's a dominating run blocker, and they drafted Brian Winters out of Kent State. I think this guy may end up starting at guard. Love what he brought to the table for the Golden Flash is the guy that excels in both pass blocking and run blocking, and when you look at Oday Abushi out of Virginia, He's another versatile player that can play either guard or tackle. So you see the Jets want to come in and build depth alone at offensive line to avoid that situation that happened last season where they struggled early on in the year. And they also added Steven Peterman from the Detroit Lions, a veteran guy that also can provide quality depth. Up front on that defensive line, Muhammad Wilkerson enjoyed a great 2012 campaign and should have made the Pro Bowl. Once again, remember back in 2011 when I called this guy Chaos on Wheels? Well, that's what he was last season for the Jets and looking to build on that this year in 2013. They also drafted Sheldon Richardson in the first round out of Missouri. Here's a guy that has all the athleticism in the world, and I think he's going to help bolster that defensive front for the Jets, give them another pass rusher to get after the quarterback. I think he projects well to be a three technique, so if the Jets want to use a little bit of a hybrid defense, he definitely can fill that role. Now, on the interior, they need someone to step up and be a consistent presence at that nose tackle position, whether it be Kenrick Ellis or Antonio Gray, whom they got from the San Diego Chargers. One of those two guys will have to step up and take some of that pressure off the ends as well as off the outside backers and tying up those double teams. If you're going to run a 3-4 defense, and in order for it to be effective, you need guys that are threats coming off the edge. That's why the Jets hope Quentin Copel's second-year guy out of North Carolina can be that player that they want him to be to help this defense go. They couldn't get to the quarterback last season. They couldn't stop the run. So they need not only him to set the edge, but also get after the QB. They bring back Calvin Pace. They also sign Antoine Barnes from the San Diego Chargers. They need someone to step up on the outside to be that constant presence that opposing offenses have to worry about. I think they're fine on the interior. They have one of the more underrated linebackers in the game. They have their own version of London Fletcher and David Harris, one of the best linebackers you'll see. And also Demario Davis, second year player from Arkansas State guy, did a solid job last year. But again, they have to get better at stopping the run and applying pressure. Otherwise, this defense will be back where it was last season. Now, also keep an eye on Troy Davis, undrafted free agent from Central Florida, a guy that was a very productive player for the Knights. I think he has an excellent chance to make this roster. Yes, Darrell Reeves is gone, but all is not lost back there in the Jets secondary, if you ask me. They still have a pretty good player in his own right in Antonio Cromartie, a guy with long arms, tremendous speed, and has the ball skills to come away with some interceptions. He's going to mentor the young guy whom they drafted in the first round, D. Milner out of Alabama, whose style eerily compares to Darrell Reeves. Not saying he will be Darrell Reeves, but he has the same type of skills as Darrell Reeves, a guy that can get in your face, do a great job with bump press, has recovery speed, and is a very good tackler. So I'm fine with Milner and Cromartie as the starters for the Jets. Now, the nickel and dime position is where I have some questions. Will it be Aaron Barry, who came over late last season as a free agent, or will it be Kyle Wilson? Will he finally step up and play like we saw him play at Boise State? At the safety position, they bring in Juan Landry from the Jacksonville Jaguars, who's a very solid safety. I like that pickup. And opposite of him is going to be a combination of guys, maybe Antonio Allen, who they drafted last year, or Josh Bush, whom they also drafted last year. But my bet is on an undrafted free agent in Rontez Miles out of California, Pennsylvania. This is a guy that plays like Leron Landry as a free safety. He has the ball skills, but also is a ferocious tackler. So I think the only questions you can have about the Jets' secondary lie in the depth and not the frontline starters. As far as the kicking game is concerned, the Jets were fine in that department. Both kicker Nick Folk and punter Robert Malone did a great job last season. It was the coverage units that need extra attention and extra work. Remember, coverage units are an extension of defense. You have to get better in that aspect. You can't give up touchdowns like the Jets did last season. 
they do have a special team stalwart on their coverage unit in Nick Ballour. Big fan of his game and what he did at Central Michigan and what he has done so far for the Jets. The return game is also in good hands with Joe McKnight and Jeremy Curley, although they're going to need those guys to come up with some big plays this season to help out that offense. Reason for optimism for the Jets, you look at a defensive-minded head coach, so you have to give Rex Ryan credit. The defense will always be fine. They'll be in a lot of games, and that right there can win you a lot of games. A lot of times, it's all about stopping your opponent, maybe coming away with a defensive touchdown or two. That right there can put you in position to be victorious. Now, on the flip side, the cause for concern will be the offensive side of the football. Can they put enough points on the board? And what new offensive coordinator Marty Morningwig do with the weapons at his disposal? That's going to be the biggest concern and question that they're going to have to answer in 2013. Now, what the Jets have on their roster, number one, they have a stud at every level on their defense. On the defensive line, it's Muhammad Wilkerson. At the linebacker position, is David Harris. And in the secondary, it's Antonio Cromartie. And number two, they have an improved offensive line, which means they will be able to protect the quarterback better this year, and they will be able to run the football. And third, they have Rex Ryan, a defensive guy that will always have his defense in contention to be successful. Now, what they lack, they don't have an offensive threat. Period. Now, one person on this offense scares the living bejesus out of defensive coordinators, and they don't have the continuity. They revamped that entire offensive side of the football, and they don't have enough playmakers on the entire team. The three guys I named are all on defense, and that's their only playmaker. So they got to get better. They got to get more talented in order to have some success. road to the Super Bowl for the Jets goes like this. Number one, they got to be dominating defensively all year long. They can't give up anything. And two, that offense just has to average 20 points a game. Last year when the Jets scored 20 points a game, nine times out of 10, they were victorious. So if you can get that defense 20 points, the Jets can win a bunch of games this year. And third, they have to be multiple in their formations, but stay simplistic in their approach, which means keep it simple. Don't get complex, focus and execute. And the Jets can win way more games in 2013. Have the Jets finishing fourth in the AFC East. This looks like a rebuilding year for the Jets. I think they're going to try to win games defensively and hope the offense comes along as the season progresses. But right now, I don't see enough playmakers on the offense side of football to pose a threat to any of the teams that I have rated above them. And I also want to give a huge shout out to Jet Fan Forums for always showing football game plan support.